first step you need to do is you need to determine whether there's an other circuit. And what, what do we need for an other circuit, Derek? A connected graph. You need odd balances. We need all the vertices to have an even balance. So then you, got, you want to go through your graph and determine whether you got another circuit. And you do that by looking at how many edges are at each vertex. Do we have any vertices that have an odd balance? Yes. Do we? Which one? Those two. Oh, we can't talk about it, can we? Should I put some, should I put some letters up there? Because it's pretty hard to have a conversation. Jamie Lynn's telling me there's an odd balanced vertex up there, but she can't, which one is it? So let me put some letters in there. There's A, there's B, there's C, there's D, there's E, there's F, and there's G. So which, which one are you talking about? All of them except for E. All of them? Except for E. You're fast. Is she right? Mm -hmm. You guys are fast too. Wow, you, I think you guys are my smartest class. Except for E. I like how you answered that. I like how you answered that. So E has an even balance of 4, but all the other vertices have an odd balance. So can we make another circuit out of this graph? No, and absolutely not. We need to have all the vertices to have an even number of edges attached to them. That's the edges attached to them, or the number of edges attached to them is called valence. So now that you've identified the odd vertices, how many are there? There's six. So write that down. There's six odd vertices. So how many even vertices do we have? Just one. So we have a total of seven vertices. These two numbers should add up to that total. So now the next step after we identified it's not another circuit and we've identified the, the odd and even balances, now we got to pair up the odd vertices, the <laughs> odd balance vertices, okay? So I can do this any way. There's lots of ways we can pair them up. If I have six odd balance vertices and I pair them up, how many, how many pairs do I have? Three, that's good, because two makes a pair. Six divided by two is three, so we're gonna have three pairs. So you try to pair them up by, by one shared edge. You wanna, you wanna be optimal and try to just have one edge shared between the two odd balanced vertices. So, cause, cause don't write this down, but this is not an optimal answer. If I were to pair up A with, 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 with G, that, uh, that's two edges. That's two edges. That doesn't, that's not optimal. I, sh I, I shouldn't have to go that far to pair up A with an odd balanced vertice because we got one right at D. We have an odd balanced vertice at D. Okay? So I should try to pair up the vertices, the odd balanced vertices with another odd balanced vertice that's really close. Now I could have done A and B. Or I could have done A and C. You guys, there's more than one solution to this. I chose A and D. So then the other pair, I'm just going to do A and uh, B here. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Hi, how are you? I'm Mr. Bloom. You get your schedule chain? yes. changed? Can I take a look? So uh, I'm going to pair A, vertex A, to D. So we got a graph here, and a graph is made up of vertices and edges. A graph is made up of vertices and edges. So <clears throat> A has an odd balance because there's three edges connected there. So I've paired them up with D, and I'm going to pair 
What, what edge, what vertex am I going to pair B up with? Which one would you guys do? Am I going to pair them up with D? No, D's already paired up. So I'm going to pair them up with C. I'm going to pair B up with C. And now I've got F and G to pair up. Now I can pick, I can pick this one or I can pick this curvy one. It doesn't matter. They're both just a single edge. Which one do you want me to do? Curve one, okay. Okay, so now I highlighted these edges. And because I highlighted these edges, these are the edges I'm gonna reuse. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put arrowheads on here. I'm gonna put arrowheads on here because we're gonna reuse these edges. Why are we reusing these edges? Because there's no other circuit here. There's no other circuit. So by reusing these edges, we're, we're creating a circuit where there wasn't one. So we're going to do down and back on these reused edges so that we can find something. So now once you've highlighted your reused edges, the edges you're going to repeat, now you got to figure out where we're going to start this. What vertex do we start? Now, and I would suggest you start at the vertex that has the most edges connected to it. And which one is that? Well, it's either D or C. They both have a valence of seven. They both have seven edges connected there. So let's start at C, I guess. So I'm going to start at C, and I'm going to do that down and back. So one, two. So this is a directed graph. A directed graph contains numbers and arrows. The numbers are the order in which you're taking that edge, and the arrows are your direction. So I'm starting at C. I start at C. I'm going down to B back. Okay, now where do you want to go? So I can go, I can go around. I'll pick to go around. So I'm gonna go around the curve here. So that's my third edge. And then right here, I'm at A. Now I could do that down and back right now at A, or I could do it from D. I'll do it, I'll do the down and back right now. So I, four, I'm, I, I'm gonna take that edge to D. Five, I'm coming back to A. So now I'm at A. And this is the only edge I haven't, haven't used. So sometimes when you're going through these graphs, the graph tells you where to go because it's an edge that you haven't traveled. So unless it's a highlighted edge that you're going to reuse, you're not going to travel more than one time on an edge unless it's highlighted. So now I'm at B. So what, what edge haven't I traveled on? You guys see how it, the graph is telling you where to go? We haven't done this edge. So it's like when you start, you've got all these decisions to make. But once you get started, the graph is going to tell you where to go. All right, so now I'm at D. I'm at D. I could do this down and this back, or I could go down here. There's more than one solution. There's probably over 100 solutions to this graph. What do you want to do? You want to go to C? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So that would be 8. And then we're going to come back to D. You guys see I've done this whole circle. This whole circle has been covered. So now I'm back at D. I can either do the straight line or I can do this curvy line. I'll do the curvy line. I just, I just picked it. Oh, did I do two 8s here? Mm -hmm. I did. 7... Eight, eight. <laughs> you guys gotta, you guys gotta say whoa to Mr. Bloom. Mr. Bloom makes mistakes, and uh, that should have been nine. And so then this edge is ten. Coming down here to G. Now I could do a return, or I could take this return. Uh, what do you want to do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna call on you. What do you want to do here, Jaquez? I'm at G. Where, where do you want to go? 
I want to go to F. I do that down and back. Okay. 11 takes me to F. Then what am I going to I should come right back, right? So 12 takes me right back to G. So my G, this is one of those reused edges that's going to help us create that circuit. Yeah? Why didn't you go down the, um, the other F to G? I could have done that. I could have. That's a possibility. Did you... Chiquez wanted me to go that way. Yeah, he said go up, but then you said. Are you, are you backseat you driver? That. You're backseat driver, aren't you? In someone's car, you tell you tell them where to go. Think you know better. Yeah, it could have been. You own it. There's more than one solution here. You guys don't get hung up with Mr. Bloom's solutions. It's only one. It's only one possible one out of many, many, many. So yeah. That's the exciting part of doing your homework. You can do this the way you see it. Because, Derek, we see these problems all differently. We do. You guys see shapes in here that I don't see. There's a peace sign in there somewhere, someone said. So you can do however you see the graph. Anybody ever, got, anybody ever get lost driving? Go someplace in a neighborhood. I've got this friend of my daughter's that, that she, like, he like, she likes to hang out with. And I swear there's gotta be eight turns going into his neighborhood. And so when I go in there, I mean, I have GPS, but like, I, I can't figure out, I, I think I know how to get out of the neighborhood to come home. Uh-uh, I always take a wrong turn. And luckily, if you take enough turns, you, you end up out of the neighborhood, but this is kind of like that. You go in there and, and you don't know where you've been. That's why we created a directed graph and that's why we number these edges. Because we, we know there's a circuit somewhere in there. So we, we number our path. We, we indicate our direction through a directed graph so that we know for certain that we've covered those edges. So you want me to change this? You okay with this? So how, how if I do it now? I'll do it now, okay? So right now I'll go up to F and that's gonna be 13. Now where do you wanna go? Where do you wanna go, Brianna? We're at F. You started at C? I did, I started at C. Where do you wanna go? Is the graph talking to you? To E? Sosa just, just stole your, 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 main, your minute of fame. Hey, it's too late. You missed it. You missed it. You've been, you've been working so hard in class. That one minute of fame, you, you, you missed it. You could have been on YouTube. Then where we go? We're at E. What are we going to do, Lindsay? Oh, Courtney, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Doraney. I mean, Fernando. Courtney, right? Yeah. Okay. You're going to go to G? Yeah. Sorry, I. Is there a Lindsay in this class? No. I must be. I'm going to look at my roster. I think there's a Lindsay that sits in your chair. So I'm at G now. Where do you want to go, Doraney? I'm right down here. Can we go? Can we go back to F? Yeah, I was going to say that we're. Because don't we have to make it back to C? We do got to get back to C. I asked you a question. Can I go to F? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go. Could I? I don't know if it's already. Have I been there? Yeah. Yeah, you've been there. I can't do that. That's not a repeated edge. You can't go. Tell Mr. Bloom. He's, he's, he's. No, you can't go there. Uh-uh, I can't do it. Uh-uh, you tell me. Where should I go? From G to D because we haven't went there. We haven't gone on that edge. Good. See, at some point, these graphs start talking to you. And they tell you, you know what? You can't go that way. You, this is the only edge you haven't traveled, is, is the G to D edge. So now where do we want to go, Soshi? Where would you want to go? Can we go to C? Why, you got some ice cream up there you want to get? Well, we've already been on that edge, Soshi. So we can't go there. We got to wait. We got to go the other route. It's, yeah, I got to go. I haven't done this edge. 
Yeah, E is the only edge we haven't traveled. We're going to have to take a, a little detour before we can get the ice cream. So now what? Yeah, so now, now we go to C. We're done, right? Why not? Yeah, we haven't done these two edges. We haven't covered these. Mr. Bloom's trying to purposely mislead you. And then I come back to C, and we're done. We're done. We've traveled 20 edges. We've created a circuit out of an Eulerized graph that was contained no Euler circuit. So... This is not an Euler circuit because we have vertices that have an odd number of edges connected to them. So the yellow edges are repeated edges, and this process is, calling, is called Eulerizing the graph. And we Eulerize the graph by identifying odd valence vertices, and then we identify repeated edges we're going to use between those odd valence vertices. And then we can create a circuit out of something that didn't contain a circuit without repeating those edges. So you, you, that, that, that's what this is. That's what this activity is. You guys comfortable with this? Other than Siona? All right. Why don't you, I'm going to do attendance. And I'm going to, why don't you guys do A? Take a look at A. And then take a look at C, at graph C. And try to do, try do one on your own. You can, you can. You can partner up, ask a question of your elbow partner. But you're not going to learn this by watching Mr. Bloom do this on the board. You guys look at the options in front of you. And, and it was really confusing. Where do I start this? There's so many decisions to make. Just make a decision and start the process. Because at some point, when you're getting through here, the graph is going to tell you exactly where to go. And you're like, holy cow, this is easy. You do this a couple times repetitively and you'll get this.